Okay, students, in this video, I just want to recap and uh, expand on a concept that we talked about in the previous vid video, and that is formula masses, which are molar masses. A molar mass is the mass of a mole of substance. So the, the mass will be given in grams, the grams per mole. So that's what this is. It's grams per mole. Okay, that's a molar mass. It's also called the formula mass because it is the mass of a formula of a mole of those formulas. So a formula mass or a molar mass is of a compound is the total, remember we have to add up, it's the total of the atomic masses of all the atoms in the compound. So if you have two hydrogens in the compound, then you need to have both hydrogens masses. So we simply add the mass of all the constituent atoms, the atoms that make it up, to get the formula mass or the molar mass of a mole of a compound. That is the mass of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. So here's an example here, and I, I believe you've already done this before, but just another opportunity to practice. This is calculating the molar mass of a compound, and basically you need to add up all of the atomic masses. So here I have three calciums. How many phosphoruses do I have in this compound? Well, there's only one in that phosphate ion, but there are two phosphate ions. So I have two phosphoruses. How many oxygens do I have? If you said eight, they are right. So there are eight. So go ahead and calculate that real quick. And uh, pause the video to do so and come back when you're, when you're done. All right, I'm just going to work through this and uh, so you can see how I'm doing this. I'm being very diligent about explicitly stating the math that I'm doing. So when I calculate a molar mass, and very often you'll be doing this on as a side calculation, because you're, you'll need to calculate this formula mass, this molar mass, so you have that number that you can then plug into a dimensional analysis problem in a molar mass conversion step. So this is often done as a side calculation. So I'll show you again how I do this three calciums. So I'm going to specifically st explicitly state three times calcium. Then I've got two times phosphorus. And then I've got eight times oxygen. And then I repeat that by saying three times well, calcium has a molar mass of 40.078 grams for a mole of calcium atoms. Two times phosphorus has a molar mass of 30.974. And oxygen. We, are, we just did that. I happen to remember that it's 15.999 grams per mole. So I'm going to do this math. These are exact numbers, by the way. I have exactly three calciums, so these numbers don't limit my sig figs. So I've got three calciums, so let's do that math real quick. I've got three times 40.078 equals 120.234. One two zero point two three four yeah grams per mole. Now I'd like to take a moment here and talk about the sig figs issue on this. I've technically have just done a multiplication problem three times that number, and I get an answer. And yes, it would be correct to say that the sig fig rule for multiplication is to take the fewest number of sig figs, which is five in this case, because that's an exact number and then to round the answer to only five sig figs. If you do that, notice what's going to happen. You'll get an answer that says 120.23. And you would drop off that last digit. But I'm not going to do that because I know that last digit with fair precision. Can you see why? When you are multiplying this number by three times, 
This is written as a multiplication problem, but fundamentally, when you have a, or when you are multiplying a number by an exact number, then I know what this digit is out to three places past the decimal. And you can conceptualize this problem as basically just adding this number to itself and doing that three times. So why would I throw away precision just because I've chosen to written it as a multiplication problem when I could have kept that precision if I'd written it as an addition problem? Well, if I write it as an addition problem, obviously I can report out three places past the decimal. So I know that degree of precision, and I'm going to keep it. Same thing here. I could think of this as two times that number, or I could just say that number plus that number. And if I conceive this as a, an addition problem, then I do know that third digit past the decimal, and I'm going to keep that precision. So 2 times 30.974 equals 61.948. And down here for oxygen, 8 times 15.999 equals... And I'm going to keep all of those digits out to the third position because this, this is really just a, another way of writing an addition problem. 127.992. So this is an important distinction and it is a subtlety when using our sig figs rules. If you are multiplying a number by some exact number of instances of that number, you could also conceive of it as just being an addition problem where you're adding this number to itself repeatedly. And if so, think of how much precision you have and should be able to keep if you were just adding them. And don't throw away that precision just because you've chosen to write it as a multiplication problem. All right, so these are the, uh, the mass contributors to each for each element. So I'm going to add them up. 310.174. And what are my units? Well, that, that's grams per mole of calcium phosphate. So there's the molar mass of calcium phosphate, and I can put a little circle around that. Right? And I included the units in the, in the circle part of the problem because the units need to be there. Okay, so that's just a little bit of review uh, of how to do to calculate a molar mass of a compound, which you've done before, but I wanted to take an opportunity to reflect on how our sig figs can be retained even when the multiplication rule would say to get rid of a sig fig.